January 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament. The whole earth had a common language and a common vocabulary. When the people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick instead of stone and tar instead of mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered across the face of the entire earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had started building. And the Lord said, If as one people all sharing a common language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be beyond them. Come, let's go down and confuse their language so they won't be able to understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there across the face of the entire earth and they stopped building the city. That is why its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the entire world, and from there the Lord scattered them across the face of the entire earth. This is the account of Shem. Shem was 100 old when he became the father of Arphaxad two years after the flood. And after becoming the father of Arphaxad, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad had lived 35 years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxad lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Reu. And after he became the father of Reu, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Reu had lived 32 years, he became the father of Sirug. And after he became the father of Sirug, Reu lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sirug had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahar. And after he became the father of Nahar, Sirug lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahar had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah. And after he became the father of Terah, Nahar lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. Haran died in the land of his birth, in Ur of the Chaldeans, while his father Terah was still alive. And Abram and Nahar took wives for themselves. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, And with them he set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. When they came to Haran, they settled there. The lifetime of Terah was 205 years, and he died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, 
Go out from your country, your relatives, and your father's household, to the land that I will show you. Then I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. And I will make your name great, so that you will exemplify divine blessing. I will bless those who bless you. But the one who treats you lightly I must curse, and all of the families of the earth will bless one another by your name. So Abram left, just as the Lord had told him to do, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took his wife, few Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they left for the land of Canaan. They entered the land of Canaan. Abram traveled through the land as far as the oak tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. Then he moved from there to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west, and A on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and worshipped the Lord. Abram continually journeyed by stages down to the Negev. There was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to stay for a while because the famine was severe. As he approached Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, Look, I know that you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will keep you alive. So tell them you are my sister, so that it may go well for me because of you, and my life will be spared on account of you. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw the woman was very beautiful. When Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. So Abram's wife was taken into the household of Pharaoh, and he did treat Abram well on account of her. Abram received sheep and cattle, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his household with severe diseases because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and said, what is this that you have done to me? Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Here is your wife. Take her and go. Pharaoh gave his men orders about Abram, and so they expelled him along with his wife and all his possessions. God, I'm, I'm always amazed at how easily I get myself in trouble <laughs> and how you're there to protect us just like you actually protected Abram in his lie uh, to protect himself he didn't trust you enough to take care of him and his wife and so he lied and he had her lie on top of that um, Pharaoh could have killed him when they found out especially after his his whole household getting incredibly sick uh, but yet you protected him coming out of that you knew the plans that you had for him. God, today I just ask that you help us stay out of trouble. I don't know how to put it more plainly than that, but I swear I can find trouble faster than anything. Just help me remember in my heart, in my mind, what it is that you want me to do. I don't want you to always have to come in and swoop in and save me and get me on the right track. I want to stop being a child in this process and I want to grow up and I want to follow your path. I want to follow your word and, and I already love you so much and I do try really hard. But even Abram, who, who was a man of God, even he got himself and his wife and his household in trouble uh, by lying and not trusting you. So today, let's work on trust. God, can we do that? I need to learn how to trust you more with everything in my life and stop getting in trouble as well. God, we just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.